In the early 2000s, the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency and the U.S. Navy recognized the need for a weapon that could engage critical targets at extended ranges and do so in extremely hostile environments without relying on precision intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance sources. Since then, the team has developed the Long Range Anti-Ship Missile, or LRASM, featuring advanced onboard sensing and processing capabilities that diminished its dependency on data links and GPS guidance. The liquid-fueled surface-to-surface -surface missile has an unprecedented potential that will allow highly precise engagement of moving ships based solely on course or initial target queuing. Moreover, its innovative features will enable it to penetrate advanced air defenses, including high-speed and high-assurance lethality. Under an accelerated acquisition contract, Lockheed Martin is further maturing technologies that will bring additional advanced long-range sea and land strike capabilities to the fifth-generation F-35 fleet. With initial fit checks completed and integration efforts going on right now, the Harpoon missile will soon find a worthy replacement. development. The Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, and the Office of Naval Research initiated a joint development program in 2008. The endeavor aimed to create a weapon capable of penetrating sophisticated enemy air defense systems from a considerable range. Thus, the AGM-158C long-range anti-ship missile was born. The new system has the capability to engage adversaries armed with anti-satellite weapons, a concerning threat that affected several US-made weapons, like the 1977 Harpoon. Such devices could knock out GPS constellations, blinding the missiles and rendering them less effective. Needless to say, such adversaries are also equipped with advanced air defense capabilities, pushing the need for more significant standoff ranges. Consequently, the new missile was fitted with advanced counter-countermeasures to evade hostile active defense systems. In late June of 2009, DARPA selected its main contractor, and Lockheed Martin received a $10 million contract for a nine-month phase. This initial study phase consisted of concept development, primary design, cost estimation, and analytical support. The program was eventually transitioned to the Navy for a second 27-month phase, covering detailed design, critical design review, material procurement, fabrication, integration, and testing. Building the prototypes. The demonstrator was ready to support a rapid transition to operational use by 2012 and the Department of Defense estimated the missile would enter service in 2013. Meanwhile, another contract focused on developing an air-launched version that integrated technologies from the Joint Air-to-Surface Standoff Missile Extended Range, or JASM ER Strike Missile. While Lockheed Martin missiles and fire control strike weapons built the El Azram A prototype demonstration, the Tactical Missiles Division developed the El Azram B one. In turn, BAE Systems Information and Electronic Systems Integration designed the onboard sensor systems, with each division receiving $9.7 million during the first stage. The El Azram A team then got $60.3 million to execute two air launch demonstrations, and the El Azram B team got $157.7 million to create four vertical launch system demonstrations for the U.S. Navy. Counter-countermeasures. Taking into account its predecessor's legacy, the long-range precision-guided autonomous anti-ship missile was custom-made to meet the needs of U.S. Navy and Air Force warfighters. Thus, it was designed to fulfill their need for anti-surface warfare weapons capability. The El Azram is armed with a 1,000-pound penetrating and blast fragmentation warhead and employs precision routing and guidance for day or night in all weather conditions. The missile can also approach targets using its self-directing sensing signature control and dynamic response features to defeat air defense systems. 
Plus, it can be guided by its launch aircraft toward enemy ships from as far away as 200 nautical miles. In addition, it is equipped with a multimodal radio frequency sensor suite for target detection and a weapon data link that not only facilitates communication with operators, but also enables other systems to feed a real-time electronic picture of the battlefield. As a result, several missiles can work together by sharing data and executing a coordinated swarm attack. Meanwhile, an enhanced digital anti-jam GPS allows the missile to detect and destroy specific targets within numerous groups of ships, especially high-priority targets such as aircraft carriers, troop transport ships, and guided missile cruisers. The weapon's sophisticated technology aims to reduce dependence on intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance platforms, network links, and GPS navigation when performing in aggressive electronic warfare environments. Hence, advanced guidance enables it to operate on gross target queuing data to accurately pinpoint predefined targets in denied environments and successfully destroy them. Additionally, the weapon includes an electro-optical imaging infrared seeker with automatic scene and target matching recognition that provides positive object identification and accurate targeting for the flight's terminal phase. The advanced targeting systems on board give the innovative machine an upper hand, effectively eliminating the need for prior or precision intelligence or other supporting services that could hamper a mission. Finally, the stealthy missile was designed to fly towards its target at medium altitude and then drop for a sea skimming approach to counter its objective shipboard anti-missile defenses. Notably, aside from short low-power data link transmissions, the missile does not emit signals for stealth purposes. Launching the missile. Lockheed Martin conducted the first captive carry flight test in the summer of 2012. The trial, conducted at several altitudes and speeds, proved the LRASM's ability to detect, classify, and recognize targets. Designed to be launched from the Mark 41 vertical launch system, the weapon will be compatible with most of the U.S. Navy's vessels and fixed-wing aircraft. Furthermore, it can be fired from outside direct counterfire ranges without sacrificing the maximum possibility of a target hit. In September of 2013, an LRASM booster test vehicle flight successfully demonstrated a launch from a Mark 41 canister, also using the already proven Mark 114 booster. The company pursued the surface launch effort to reduce program risk. Likewise, it was a priority to field offensive anti-surface warfare capability on U.S. Navy surface combatants on an accelerated basis. Remarkably, the missile can be employed from guided missile destroyers and cruisers, with minor software modifications to existing launch control systems. Moreover, the new improvement is both a low-risk and low-cost solution for naval warfighters. The future. The LRASM was expected to enter serial production in 2015, but the missile did not enter service until three years later. The SLV variant that will equip the Navy fleet, featuring the Mark 114 and capable of VLS using the Mark 41, was first tested in 2016 with the Tactical Tomahawk Weapon Control System. The LRASM A stealthy air launch subsonic variant, based on the JASM ER airframe and incorporating new sensors, entered the first low rate initial procurement LRIP contract for 23 missiles in the summer of 2017. Additionally, an improved variant known as the AGM 158C2 is expected to be fielded by 2024. Meanwhile, the ship launched supersonic variant LRASM B powered by a ramjet engine to achieve the desired cruise speed, is expected to be ready by 2025. This version was already heading towards cancellation, but was revived due to a lack of confidence in the Tomahawk. The LRASM can launch from the Navy's FA-18EF Super Hornet and the Air Force's B-1B Lancer. And in early 2022, the Air Force requested Lockheed Martin to build six next-generation AGM-158Cs, a job that should be finished within two years. In the words of the manufacturer, quote, Precision lethality against surface and land targets ensures the system will become an important addition to the warfighter's arsenal. 
El Razm provides range, survivability, and lethality that no other current system provides. Thank you for watching our video. Support our Dark Documentaries family by liking this video and subscribing to all our channels for more exciting historical and military content. And hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos. Stay tuned.